mainly if you think about language, uh, you have to think about dialects and you have to think about expressions. And if you want to market something, you need to think about the person you are marketing to and you need to speak that language. My name is Peter Sumpton and this is the Marketing Study Lab podcast. A podcast for those that are thinking, have thought and are doing, or already have a marketing qualification. Or even if you haven't, and you just want to know a little bit more about what good, happy marketing is. As we cover a whole host of marketing topics, I chat to some amazing guests, each one a superstar in their own niche. And if you have a burning marketing question already, or after this episode, get in touch. We'll chat it through. Peter at marketingstudylab.co.uk or find me on LinkedIn. The link is in the show notes. If you'd like to leave a review on iTunes, this will really help others find this podcast and spread the marketing word. Now let's get on with today's episode. Ever wondered what SaaS is? Yep, all right, okay, I don't mean being a bit cheeky. I mean the acronym, SAS. Well, I'll explain more later. But first, my guest, my 10, Panella. That was a terrible accent. My 10, I do apologise. A doctor of psychology with 15 years' experience in supporting international organisations with branding, planning, consulting, communications, and, of course, digital marketing can't wait to get stuck into this one but being proficient in five languages what i want to know is my 10 what language do you dream in oh that's a, that's a funny question it depends on the day okay really it depends on the day if i've been talking in english the whole day so probably i'll dream uh, in english okay well but uh also, it depends if, if I'm having, I don't know, a quarrel or something with my husband. It's in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I like that. Is your husband Italian? No. In fact, well, he's been, he has lived in Italy for 40 years. Okay. But he's, he's from Spain. But we talk in Italian. Oh, I was going to say that would be even better if the only time you're in Italian is if you have an argument and he hasn't got a clue what's going on. <laughs> well, we do a lot of signs, you know, gestures and things with our hands. So, in the end, <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. I love it. We, we can understand. Okay, let, let's let's move on to to more professional questions. Okay, okay. Uh, and can you tell us your story? What's been the formula that's brought you to this stage in your career as a, a branding, communications, and digital marketing consultant? Well, okay, my. My background is in psychology and also in journalism. And, uh, well, to try to make the story short, something like 15 or 16 years ago, I founded, uh, living in Italy, living in Venice, still living there, I founded a um, Society for Arts and Culture that was, uh, in the beginning, it was a magazine, an online and offline magazine. It's called Human 3. It exists still. And uh, the thing is that in the beginning, it was mainly a magazine, uh, articles and news about the art world. But then it evolved. And uh, we began to do exhibitions for artists. And we began to put in contact museums, directors with uh, collections. And uh, all that began a marketing thing, a really big marketing and communication thing. And I did mainly the whole thing, not just for Human 3, but also for the artists and collections and eventually museums. So, well, this is the story. And um, I'm, I began to, to professionally dedicate myself to this, let's say, three years ago. So okay. I'm completely devoted to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you work with a lot of uh, museums and, and, and art galleries and things like that, or is it, is it expanded? No, it has expanded a lot. In fact, now I work mainly with professionals 
and uh, startups and small business okay. um, and professionals that maybe they are brilliant in, in their professions, but they know nothing about the marketing world and they are scary about it mm -hmm. and they don't trust enough the digital marketing world yeah. specifically. So this is my, my niche now and also nonprofits because okay, I love excellent. to work with nonprofits. Fantastic. I always I always say to people that to, just to scare people, all you have to do is put digital in front of something, regardless of what it is. Just say digital, whatever it is, and they'll just they'll just be scared, petrified of it. This is so true. This is so true. And it, it doesn't have to be like this. I mean, it is it is not scary at all. And it's fantastic. It opens doors and it's a, it's like to have another world it's mm -hmm. to have two lives. It's excellent but uh, sometimes it's scary so you need to show the the, the, the brilliant part of this yeah. world and the, the possibilities to people that might not be aware of that uh, you have a, a wealth of experience supporting international businesses can you explain the major differences between a local and an international marketing strategy or plan if you like well, it is it is really different because the audience is different. So you always have to think when you think about marketing, you need to think about your client or your customer. Always you have this is the main, the most important thing that you have to have in your mind. So if you think about audiences and you need to market a product or a service to a local audience, you are going to do it in a certain way with certain words and with certain um, channels. It's completely different if you need to go and you need to expand and go abroad. You have to change mentality and mainly you are going to use certain things as a base, but you need to change a lot of things depending on the country and also depending depending on the part of the country you're working in and you want to market in, which is really important. Um, mainly if you think about language, uh, you have to think about dialects and you have to think about expressions. And if you want to market something, you need to think about the person you are marketing to and you need to speak that language, meaning uh, meaning the culture, the traditions, the, 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 the history, everything. Everything is behind a language. It's fascinating. It's fascinating to explore that part. I can, ima I can imagine. It's, it's hard work, but I think it's, it's really important. And uh, it's important that you market always something with this in your mind. Mm -hmm. if, you, if this is your starting point, you are going to achieve your goal for sure. And you are going to avoid a lot of, of obstacles in the middle if you have this in mind. And a lot of people forget that, that you need that basis and, and that customer centric focus right at the beginning, because if, if you're not into marketing or you don't necessarily understand what it does, it, you get into yeah. that mindset just of, well, our customers are our customers. <sighs> Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. But you are absolutely uh, right. But this is a this is a big mistake, I, and I think that uh, everybody, not just the person who's beginning in this in this uh, profession, but always we, we all need to be reminded of that. Mm -hmm. We need to always consider our client or our customer all the time. What are the key things to consider, including the client and the customer, when marketing a product? or even a service internationally? Uh, well, you need to consider a lot of things. The daily life of the person, I mean, if you're going to sell something, a product, again, or a service to a person, you need to understand the way of living, the way of thinking, the way of uh, relating with others, and also the way to do business. This is another very important part. You need to know how to do business in a certain place. For example, it's not the same if you are going to do if you are going to market a product in, in France, it's completely different than if you are going to do it in Japan or in the United States or in the UK or in Argentina. So they are completely different realities. And uh, you also need to think about, I don't know, the legal stuff. And uh, for example, 
here in the in the in the European Union we have the GDPR thing. That well was a big thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were uh, well. It was a, a really big thing. Let's say that. Mm -hmm. And um, well, this was a really important thing for all of us. But uh, I don't know in Latin America they didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. And this is also important because it was like um, it, it was a big eye opening for all of us when we realized that when you think about marketing and with, you think about relationship relationship with others, you need to think about different realities and context because we are not isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of, of realities, different context and, and things like that, mm -hmm. how, how important is the part of psychology within marketing communications, particularly so on social channels? Oh, well, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's the, the base of everything. You know, it's, it's the, 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 in Italian, you have the word that's the fundamenta. It's the base part, the thing that upon that, over that, you can build. You need, you need to understand. You need to understand the other person. And you need to try to read behind the words that are written. And uh, sometimes we, we can make huge mistakes because we don't have the person uh, in front of us. We don't have eyes and we need to try to understand. And this is, again, why it's so important, the language. You need to understand because sometimes there are expressions or ways to, to, to say hello or to say goodbye that depending on the culture means different things. And maybe a person is not being rude at all. It's like the way of, of, of saying goodbye. And you say, oh, my God, uh, this person doesn't want to do business with me or this person doesn't want to talk to me. And this is not true. Uh, so to try to understand the other person. It's crucial, mainly mainly if you're going to do something on social. I mean, if you're going to have, I don't know, a Twitter chat. Oh, my God, you really need to try to understand the person, not just the, 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 the guest, but also your audience, your Twitter audience. This is the same on Facebook and also on LinkedIn, any social. So, so do you find that different countries use social and digital, digital platforms differently? Or are there commonalities or, or, or similar things that different countries all do the same. No, they are. I think that the nowadays we all use more more or less the same tools. The thing that I find is the way that we use it. We use it in different in different times and in different ways. I don't know. For example, when we were I don't know back three or four years ago, we in Europe we all used WhatsApp. In the states, nobody. I remember telling my friends or people in the business, hey, let's WhatsApp, it's better. And at the time it, was, it wasn't it was the video in the WhatsApp, it was just the chat. And they say, what? No, let's do FaceTime. Or, so it wasn't at all a thing that uh, was really common, a, a daily thing for us in Europe. And um, so I think that it is, again, a thing that depends on the culture and mainly the use of the tools Various is different depending on the culture, and um, I think that inside inside of Europe, I find a lot of a lot of different use of the tools, and uh, of course with America, it's a, it's like another world. I I can just I can just imagine somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, thinking that they're gonna target these these. <laughs> it'll take America uh, Americans in Texas, say for example, using a certain platform, and there's nobody on there. And why isn't this working? <laughs> and you say, oh my God, where's everybody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they all are they all on holiday or vacation or exactly. where have they gone? Exactly. Well, for example, I don't know. They love I don't know talking about tools. Um, they love who sweet. And in Europe, I don't know, we prefer Buffer. And I don't know, other, you have so many, but just to say uh, two different things that, two different tools, brilliant tools that do this more or less the same thing. But so you prefer certain things depending on your culture and depending on your group mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of, of peers. So if nobody uses WhatsApp, what's the point to have it? So. Very true. Just sticking with, with digital, uh, finally, until we go into some uh, quick fire questions. When, when discussing 
algorithms or, or, or the detail behind yeah. these platforms. Are the differences yeah. per country, as far as you can see, or, or is it all pretty similar, the standards that we have to kind of conform to? No, it's pretty different. And, well, mainly talking about algorithms, it's really different because um, nowadays algorith algorithms have evolved a lot. And now they are tracking our intentions. And previously, it was just the keywords. So keywords were different, absolutely. But now the difference is bigger because, again, the intention is different because you have a culture, you have a history, you have a um, certain way of doing things. And, of course, a certain way of searching, which is different. So I'm pretty sure that if you and I begin to search something on Google, the same thing we are going to search in a different way, mm -hmm. even using the same words. So this is the fantastic and the clever thing about Google. They, they can track our intention. So this is fantastic for, our, for us as digital marketers. It's fantastic. Is it, some people I, see, see it as a negative, but I, just, I, I, I see it mainly positive. I can understand where they're coming from and, and you know, mm -hmm. understanding a bit too much about you and, and, and Facebook have got in trouble uh, famously for, yep. for doing things yep. like that. But if it's used ethically and in the right way and for the right reasons, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think that it might be scary, but again, they are all these things are tools. They are like a car. So a car is something wonderful, but you can also kill somebody with a car mm -hmm. because it depends on how you use the tool. So it's not the tool is not bad or good. It, it depends on how you use it. And I think it's going to be a very positive thing. Of course, it can carry bad consequences, but I think it, this part is inevitable. Absolutely. Just just to reiterate that, I, I was speaking to uh, my, my wife's a, a teacher. Uh, I was speaking to her last night, and and she she'd gone to this this seminar by this this uh, chap that he writes kids books, and he had a really good backstory, mm -hmm. and he was really engaging, and he was mm -hmm. saying that that iPads and things like that are, are, are destroying are destroying kids uh, when they're younger, and stopping speech, and 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 stopping reading and stuff like that. And yeah. I was trying to explain that yes, you're correct, they are, but it's not the iPads, it's not the technology that's doing that. It's it's us as humans and how we're exactly. integrating with it. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it's I do agree. It's such a powerful thing, though, and it's, you know, in the wrong hands, and there's a lot of wrong hands out there, you know. Uh, it's it's scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You need, we need three or four podcasts more. I, yeah, I don't know if you... <laughs> you can air them but... yeah, yeah well we'll do we'll do an x-rated version um in in 2019 i'll invite you back on and we can talk about how people use things in the wrong way okay, okay. um let's move on to quick fire questions then are you ready okay great now name one must read business book Wow! Um, and I just like to say, one, for, for, I just like to say yeah. for people that can't see because it's a podcast and so nobody can. But at the moment, all I can see is a head with about a million books in the background. <laughs> yes, well, I, I I do love reading, and uh, it's 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 difficult to pick one. It's mm -hmm. really difficult, but I think that brand now. By Nick, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it well, Westergaard. It's fantastic. It's really fantastic for anybody, not just for digital marketers. For anybody who wants to really understand what, what it is branding and to go beyond the visual and to really understand what mm -hmm. a brand implies. Oh, I, I think it's, a, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Highly recommend. What was the last thing you Googled? Oh, you want the truth? Yes, always <laughs> the truth. Okay, the truth is the difference, the difference and the good and the bad stuff between PayPal and TransferWire or TransWire or something like this, because I don't know it very well. And uh, I was referred to it and I, I, I need to learn about them. <laughs> so we've had, we've had crazier answers, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your most used app at the moment? Oh, Asana. Love Asana. I love, I love it. I think it's fantastic. 
it's great for project management and it is also a fantastic to do list. Mm -hmm. So it's a collaborative tool. Oh, I, I, I love it. I yeah, love it. I agree. What is your favorite theory, concept, or methodology? Well, uh, I think it's a, a, a pretty basic one. Uh, you need four things always when you are going to market somebody, something, or some product, service, or whatever. Four things. First, you need a plan. Second, you, you need an action. You need to put this plan or strategy into the reality. Third, you need to do metrics. You need to measure your results, always. And then the fourth, you readjust or you repeat from the beginning. So it's the four steps that you always, always, always need to repeat. That's almost a great way to end, but I've got one more massively important question to ask you. <laughs> Do you prefer hot summers or cold winters? Oh, cold winters, please. Please, always. <laughs> oh, I think we differ on that one. I'm, I'm more hot summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Spain, and I tell you the truth. Oh, my God, hot summers here. It's so, so difficult to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, 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 I'd take that for a couple of weeks uh, right now. <laughs> um, if people want to find out more about what you do or get in touch with you, uh, where do you suggest they go? Oh, well, it's pretty easy. It's my name and last name, so it's mytenpanela.com. It's M-A-I-T-E-N-P-A-N-E-L-L-A.com. So it's uh, more or less everything there. Also the social media channels I'm in and a little bit of my story and the things I, I can do and I can help with. Well, my turn. I'm, I'm sure people will, will get in touch. And it's been fantastic talking to you today about everything international marketing. You can tell you've got a passion for it. And that's always a pleasure to speak to somebody that has that. Oh, thank you so much, Peter. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure, really a pleasure. So here are my takeaways on international marketing, as discussed with my 10. Local and international marketing are majorly different, and you can't forget that. Although they both revolve around the customer, the audience will always be different. Different strategies are required per country, or even different parts of the same country, dependent on the differentiators such as culture, history, language, and dialect. You need to be speaking the language of the customer, physically and metaphorically. My 10 says you need to consider the following when marketing on an international scale. Daily life of the customer, the way of living, thinking. The different business practices in specific countries. Remembering the smaller stuff as well, particularly around legislation. Take GDPR, for example. It's massively important in the EU, obviously, but not so in Latin America. However, Latin American companies may still need to know about these elements, especially if working on an international scale. And finally, when discussing algorithms, it's important to note that they can play a massive part in getting noticed and are different depending on the language and country you attribute them to. Algorithms are so sophisticated now. They track not just the keywords and search terms that we use, which are different per country anyway, but the actual intention as well. It's time to get a bit sassy. And what I mean is we're just going to discuss what an actual SAS business is and what SAS stands for. You may have heard of the acronym quite a lot recently because it's very, very topical. And it quite simply stands for software as a service. But what does that mean? It means that a company or an individual is providing some element of software to other organizations or individuals, usually under some licensed model. So good examples of this are Salesforce and GoToMeeting. You are purchasing the software that, prov that gives you the opportunity to use and, 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 and do things with, ideally, to better your current models and processes. 
You may have heard of those two. If you haven't, look them up and you'll basically get the idea. If you think of a subscription model for something that isn't physical, you've hit the nail on the head. So that's the SaaS business. Thank you so much for joining us today on Marketing Study Lab. It really means the world that you're listening to this out there. And hopefully I've provided you some value. If you're looking to know more about what Marketing Study Lab does and is about, go to marketingstudylab.co.uk or get in touch with me personally, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or feel free to email me at peter at marketingstudylab.co.uk. Happy marketing. Oh.